we're cool. <laughs> Hello and good evening, everyone. This is Beckett Live presents another sports artist roundtable. We got some great guys on the panel tonight. We got Ken Carl, Edgar Brown, Alvin Fall, and Shadrach Harvin. What's going on, everyone? How are we? Great. Doing good. Doing yeah. great, man. Happy to be here. Happy to have all of you here. Now, uh, you've heard Chadwick and Ken on, on the Fat Packs podcast, so uh, we'll, give, we'll let them give brief introductions, but we don't, we've don't. we never heard from Edgar or Alvin on any of our platforms, so uh, we want to uh, give them a little bit of time to introduce themselves. So, Edgar, we'll start with you. Let us know, uh, you know how long you've been you've been in the art game and and uh you know what what brought you to beckett i've been uh, my name is edgar brown i've been doing sports paintings for 30 years um wow. yeah i've been commissioned by over 100 professional athletes over the years done a ton of giant stuff been a commemorative artist for the uh cadillac hamiltonian in 1994. um 1995 leroy neiman was the commemorative artist and then in 1996, I was the commemorative artist again. That was a really cool thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did some, uh, did, did, a, did a Super Bowl, uh, some, some Super Bowl unveilings one time with, uh, with Leroy Neiman back in the day. Did, uh, did a, uh, an art exhibit at the Yogi Bear Museum with, um, with uh, uh, Leroy Neiman was there as well. With that. So that was pretty cool going back because he was, he was basically the top, top, top guy um, doing everything back in the day, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I do a lot of New York Giants stuff. I'm known for doing a lot of New York Giants stuff, pretty much. Sweet, Alvin. How about yourself, buddy? Yeah. So uh, my mom was always like a an amateur artist, and she would always encourage us to paint and stuff. And my dad was a big football fan, and I used to watch a lot of. Uh, NFL films with my dad and uh, started drawing my football cards and they came out really good and had some art teachers that encouraged me and um, and uh, I just rolled with it and um, it just kind of developed and um, went to school, majored in art and um, I've done some work for, you know, I've got some signed work for, by some pro players and some college players and like uh, just growing it, keeping growing it, you know. I love to do it, and I like to make money with it. But uh, you know, my favorite part is just actually creating it. The you know the money part's not always as easy as I would like it to be. But uh, you know, I just keep doing it. So now you've done some work with uh, the Deacon Jones Foundation, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have worked with Deacon Jones Foundation. Um, so some NFL licensed prints with them. Um, I did some work with the Tampa Bay Rays. I got. Um, some work signed, by, uh, <laughs> painting signed by Carl Crawford. I got a painting signed by um, Darren McFadden for the Razorbacks. Um, I've done. I did a collage for the. I live in the Tampa area, so USF had their ten year anniversary of their football team. I did a big collage for them, um, and then a lot of uh, commissions, and then you know just continuing awesome. to try to grow and improve as an artist and. Enjoy it along the way, and I'm glad to be part of this group. Yeah, I'm happy to have you here, Chadwick. Man, it's been a while since we talked, but uh, the last time you and I did speak, we, we were in person. We were in Arizona and uh, at a card shop. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of people out that day. Um, you have some really cool things going on right now. You're doing a ton of comic book covers. Uh, you got some, an agency that you're trying to start up. Is that correct? And I mean, tell us what's going on, man. Nah, we've been going for the past, I mean, it's been two years in the works as far as planning goes. Uh, the last six months or so, we really got things together as far as the partners and everybody involved. And we're now building that out. Uh, we're now basically, uh, Susie, we are now basically building something that's artist driven for artists by artists. Um, we're looking to basically kind of change the game. Um, <coughs> We are now the official creative partner for uh, Zobie. So we're now assisting them and helping them in creating product that's going to create new revenue opportunities for both you know, companies like themselves and artists. Um, so that's the big thing. That's what we're, uh, we're really driving right now. That's a big driving force you know, with it there. Just really trying to change things and uh, bring something new to the game, creating new product, new opportunities across the board. That's where it's at. Awesome. Awesome. Ken, man, I, 
Yeah, I see. I don't. I'm not trying to take a bias towards anybody on this on this uh, show tonight, but I, I love what Kim does with his cards. I, I, near and dear to my heart. I, I feel like I'm looking at a Ken Carl uh, sketch once a week, going, "How in the world did we do that?" Uh, Kim, what's up, man? How are you, brother? I'm good, Eric. Thanks for having me on the show, man. It's great to yeah. be on with all these guys. No problem. So, uh, just for those who don't know, how long have you been doing this? <laughs> well, I've been drawing all my life, like like, uh, like the rest of these guys, I'm sure. Um, but I've really only been doing this professionally about 18 months, I would say. Um, I started drawing some sketch cards. They, with, for a lack of a better term, they blew up on the internet, as you know. And uh, I just went full time. I've been doing it ever since. So, um, again, you know, lightning in a bottle, I guess, is the best way to describe where I'm at. So, yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know if you guys are watching the feed, man. You guys are getting a lot of love coming in. This is great for, for the fourth <laughs> I feel like you might have some homers in the in the crowd here, some some ringers. Is that is that what's going on? I don't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, so cool. I sent out a bunch of leads, man. Cause... That's so cool. <laughs> Edgar Brown, you're an inspiration to so many of us artists out here. We love you, brother. All right. Brother. Who's Joey, Edgar? Because that's probably that's my brother, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's also an artist, too. Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get, the show. let's get him on. Come on, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, hey, guys, you're, you, all of you are in the, uh, the, the latest issue, uh, the June issue of, of Beckett Baseball. It's our sports, our second annual sports artist Um issue and i'm happy that you're all here i want to do something tonight last time we did a round table we, we talked specifically about their art what they're doing we're going to do that tonight with you guys but if it's okay with you i'd like to go ahead and just premiere the the, the issue at least the first few pages of it to the world that's watching is that cool with you guys yeah it's great awesome let's let me go ahead and get this set up and we will pull it up and uh and talk about all things that is that's going on here it's a beautiful it's cover a it's a beautiful issue. Uh, there's a lot of inspiration in here, and I'm sure I'm, I'm happy. I want what I want to do is get your thoughts on on the artists in here. Some some of the things that you're seeing that your artist guy that I can't that I can't see. So um, if you give me just a minute, all right. First off, the cover, that's awesome. First of all, Derek G is so iconic. It's a perfect baseball cover. What are your guys' thoughts on the cover? I, go ahead. I, I, uh, I mean, first of all, no offense to anyone on the panel because everybody here is really good. But I mean, James is—I mean, he—he's elite, man. He's as good as there is. Um, and the fact knowing that that's watercolor, I—I I, I think that's just insane because uh, that is hard. That's hard to control. I mean, that's just amazing. Was yeah, he—he he said in the other show is watercolor, right, Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just insane. I mean, that's ridiculous. Is what that is. So. Um, that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. Uh, so that's we'll just add that to the list of things I can't do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's two of us. That's two of us. <laughs> All right, let's let's, let's go ahead and uh, get into the magazine here a little bit. It's just an ad. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, Lindsey Frost and Stephen Holland here, but we're going to get to the real the real meat here. This is last year's cover of the Mike Trout. Uh, James did that one as well, and that that recently sold at auction for like thirty four hundred dollars. The original artwork for that mm. that's just nuts. Uh, Edgar, you're right here on this page as well. Is that Saquon with with that painting? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So nice. tell me about that. Yeah. So um, so I'm part of the Deacon Jones Foundation as well, and uh, okay. so I work directly with Elizabeth Jones. So I created this piece, and then um, after creating this piece, it's licensed by the NFL, licensed by the players, NFL Players Association, and uh, it's um, exclusive with the Deacon Jones Foundation. And then I reached out to uh, my contacts with the New York Giants, and with uh, we reached out to Barkley, and then Barkley signed a whole bunch of them for us, you know. And uh, all the money raised, percentage of the money raised for the Deacon Jones prints goes to uh, art scholarships and athletic scholarships for underprivileged children. So underprivileged awesome. kids and stuff. So it's, it's actually a great cause and they're doing a, they're doing a lot of great stuff. All right, let's get on the right next on. page. All right, we'll start here with Edgar. You're, you're the first up. 
Um, tell me about all three of these paintings. Like, we'll start here. Tell me about it, man. What happened? Where did this inspiration come from? So, so uh, this painting, uh, these paintings, uh, the the one of Derek Jeter did a, did a while back. So I like doing very impressionistic backgrounds and and doing. I try not to make it look like uh, a photograph. Um, I just try to um, try to capture some action and, and and movement and some excitement. And this was a, a, a World Series game. So when you're trying to represent seven games and they're wearing different uniforms. So that's why I have like the away uniform, but he's in, but, but he's inside Yankee stadium, you know, so it captures that whole thing. It's basically telling the story of, of capturing uh, what's going on there with the series. The other one is um, the Eli Manning one. That's part of the Deacon Jones foundation one too. Uh, the Eli Manning one is the Super Bowl when uh, they were playing the Patriots and he was breaking out of the uh, about to get sacked when he broke out and then threw that pass, that Hail Mary catch and stuff. That's mm -hmm. what that's what's involved there. The other one is um, is uh, Pete Sell, UFC fighter Pete Sell. So I did a um, there's a there's a kid there's a kid named um, Adam Recky in town who has a terminal illness, and a few years ago, 2012, I put together a uh, an art exhibit a sports art exhibit. And I had a bunch of celebrities, uh, athletes come to the event, including Henzo Gracie, Pete Sell, Larry Holmes. I had uh, Otis Anderson, Super Bowl MVP. And I had um, uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of other uh, professional athletes and fighters and, and um, Steve Moffat came, uh, the Olympic wrestler. So it was, a, it was a great event. It was all to raise money for um, for Adam Recky and his cause, you know? So um, that's why I created I created that piece for Pete because Pete came out of his way and uh, drove all the way up from Long Island and Henzo Gracie came up from Manhattan. So they came all the way here to Bethlehem to come to the event. And uh, I was just um, so happy that they did that, that I actually created that piece for him. Sweet, that's really awesome. <laughs> I like when get and then the like, like in your painting, I like the motion of the, the action, action that you put in. Where it's got, got the trail. trail like, 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 sorry, sorry. Didn't, didn't mean it. it. Sorry, there's a little bit of echo there. You can fix oh, that. Right. Um, <clears throat> right. well, next up, Stephen Holland. These are classics. Um, you guys, just for your art, from your artist side, what, you, what are you seeing here? Don't all talk at once, okay? But <laughs> what, what are you guys seeing here? <laughs> I mean, off the top. The attention to detail, definitely, especially in the bird piece. I'm liking that. Yeah. 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 I like how he, uh, one of the things I struggle with is I'm too, um, I, I overwork my stuff too much. I try to get too much detail and, and it's bad. I like how he, with, for a lack of a better term, I like how he just threw the paint on there and let it, let it work for him. I mean, I think it's, I just think it's beautiful. I, I wish that I could be that free and easy with stuff. It, I, I think that's amazing. Yeah, um, technique works definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like, I like how, how the light, light falls, falls on his, his body. body. Yeah, it looks, it looks, it looks natural. natural. And then, and then what, what I was trying to say is that I like the motion that it he captures. Where it looks like it's in motion. That's what I was trying to say. That got blurred out. Hey, Alvin, can you turn down your volume? Your volume again. Get a lot of echo, buddy. I'm sorry, man. I don't know why. Is that better? Not really, but we'll, we'll work. We'll fix it. Okay, but it'll be, it'll be all right. All right, next page. Um, Stephen Holland again. I want to skip past. I don't want to skip past these, but I want to get to your guys' work. This is Chris Brown. Uh, amazing again. James James will be on. The, he was on our last artist roundtable. He's going to be on the show again next week. Just a brilliant, brilliant artist. I think every one of you guys can say you look up to him. And uh, he's been doing this for so long, and he does such a great job. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more with him. Next week, he's going to give us a tour of the studio. So we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, up next here, James again. As I flip through the magazine, James. Lindsay Frost, she's a, she's a great inspiration, too. Robert, he was on the show last week. What a great yeah. guy he is. Oh, that's a good, good guy. Yeah, great everything I, 
uh, this Mike Tyson painting here is one of my favorites I've ever seen. It, it, it's so, I love a good boxing pose. Uh, the Muhammad Ali from a few pages back. This is a great one too. Uh, I, I'm Eric, still afraid of Mike Tyson. Eric, have you met Ike yet? Yes, I, I, I've met Ike uh, lots lots of times actually. He's a, he's a great yeah, guy. He's a great, he's a great dude. Yeah. All right, King Carl, we're up to you, buddy. There's, <laughs> awesome. We can talk. We can talk about the Brady if you want to. And <laughs> I, is that who's the blue? I don't. I don't know who that is. Well, it's, Petri, this, it's Alex Petriangelo when the Blues won the Cup. I, I, okay. live, I live in St. Louis. I'm a big sports fan, and I can honestly tell you, I never thought the Blues would ever win the Stanley Cup. Well, I, I, I understand that. I never thought the Rams would win a, win, win a Super Bowl, but they did. So that's <laughs> but, true. That, that's true. That's true too. We have to talk about this Yadi Molina. He's right. such a popular player. He's so collectible. This is just like. Through and through the essence of who he is as a player, I love it. But tell me, tell me where you were at when you created this. Well, again, I live in St. Louis, so he is. Everybody in St. Louis loves Yachty. I mean, he is he's the town's guy, you know, and he plays with the best way to describe it is he's an intense competitor and he plays with Fu. I won't say the full thing because I don't know if I'm allowed to, but right. he, he purely plays with Fu. So. He's an easy one for me to draw because I love drawing um, these kinds of these kinds of poses where there's a lot of energy, a lot of uh, emotion. Uh, I, that's what I do best, I think. And he's a fun one to draw because he he always has emotion. So um, he, again, he, he's an iconic player in our town. And to me, this particular image sums up who he is. So um, so that's how I chose it. And. A guy in town commissioned me to do this, so I did it. I threw the flag behind it um, uh, because he's a he's obviously a big Puerto Rican guy, um, and you know, I, or D Dominican, I guess. But anyway, I I don't know what else to say other than you know, like I said, he's an iconic player and plays with a lot of emotion and a lot of passion, and, and that was a pretty easy one to draw there. So, so you, I know that when we first started talking, you were only working with with a color pencil. That's you correct. You said earlier that you made a switch to some marker. What uh -huh. what prompted that switch? Well, to be honest with you, I mean, I wasn't selling much art. My art wasn't really going anywhere. And um, a local artist in town, you know my guy Steve Walden. I think you've met him too, right, Eric? Yeah. So him and I have become pretty close. He's a great dude. He's been a great mentor to me. And, and I meet up with him. I'll talk to him from time to time. And he basically just said, look, Kenny, your stuff's good, but, you know, you need to have something that when somebody walks in, they can see that it's yours and not someone else's, you know? So uh, he challenged me to try different stuff. I, I saw that other sketch guys were doing um, markers. So I tried those and I fell in love with them. Um, I've added watercolor to my backgrounds to try to help them uh, separate from the drawing themselves. I, I don't like just stuff on a blank page. It, it kind of bothers me. Um, I thought the watercolor would be a good use for me because it's loose and uncontrollable. And I over control the pencils, so I think it's a good combination for my stuff. Awesome! It looks great, man. It's an absolutely fantastic uh, Thanks. piece. Uh, but you, you know how I feel about your work. I don't. I don't want to blow you up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've been good. Right, Maz, Adams. Maz Adams, who was on the show last week, uh, doing great things. I'm sure he'll be on again uh, sometime soon. All great right, dude. Chadwick. This this is what I love about you, Chadwick. It's so freaking fantastic. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the Batman 66 cover because that Catwoman is something that I've never even seen. How would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> just how I work it, man. I don't know. It's just I can't even explain it sometimes. I go into my zone and I just do what I do. Pencils and things like that, those types of mediums, dry mediums, is just something that always came natural for me. It's just, you know, it didn't take long, but yeah, I developed it over time and, and you know, it is where it is now. And, and I'm still, I mean, I tell people I'm not even, you know, close to being in my prime at this point. So it's, you know, it's still going to continue to evolve and grow from there, you know, where it's at right now. Right. You do, you do, you have your, your sports stuff and I know that, but you're really big into comic book art. And I know that this is the sports issue, but how, 
the work that you're doing on comic books is just so great. Thanks, man. Like, were you into comic books as a kid, or? Yeah, I've always, I've always been real just diverse with me. Um, and as far as art, working in art, working in the industry, uh, I was always one of those driving points for me was being as versatile as possible, not just working, uh, being able to work in different, you know, uh, genres, you know, but being able to work in different mediums, being able to work in different size formats, uh, just all across the board, being as versatile as possible. And that's where it's always been. You know, there were a lot of the artists growing up early on, you know, from uh, uh, Joe Jusco to, uh, you know, I mean, God, there's so many off the top of my head. But he's one of the ones that stands out for me because it was the X-Men cards and those trading cards that, you know, that really inspired me growing up on the sports end. I mean, gosh, there were a couple of the uh, artists, Steel, um, and a couple of others from the uh, genre set. You know, that's the stuff that I grew up collecting. So that's what really inspired me. That's where my style in sports, you know, is sure. kind of, you know, sure. inspired by those guys, you know, with what I, you know, I come up with and grew up with. Shadwick, I don't know if you're if you're watching the comments here, but you got a little bit of a fan section. Uh, Jeff <laughs> says that you don't sleep and you live off of adrenaline. And Susie, who has commented a few times, I think Susie, uh, is, she, is, she a, is she a ringer for you, man? Is that... Who's who's Susie? Uh she's a friend. Okay. She, <laughs> she thinks you're awesome. No, uh, Susie's awesome. Susie, thank you. You know it. Awesome. Great, great. All right, we're gonna turn the page. Uh wait, wait, I gotta ask you about you did a Bo Jackson. Tell me about the Bo Jackson, because that's featured in our in our uh, on our, our Beckett artist feature on, on the website. Tell me about the Bo Jackson, where that inspiration come from. Uh, that one was just one of those things. You know, he was known as the Boar, and that piece was just something I wanted to do. I've got a series of work uh, called the Timeless uh, series, and that is one of those that basically depicts athlete, um, you know, the legendary guys, the legendary plays, you know, in action, and that's sure. what it. Inspired by those guys and those, you know, those uh, those plays, or, you know, those times from back then. It's just, you know, a classic, classic style of work. You know, I stick to the black and grays with it, working in inks uh, and pencils with that. So, you know, that it really, you know, brings that classic style out. You know, and right, right. right. Okay, let's let's move on here. There's Joe Ocado. But thank you, Joe, for the the Kobe Bryant photo that that uh, or the print that you sent me. I love it. This is great work here. Uh, you guys heard Joe on, a, on the podcast mm -hmm. uh, earlier this year. Um, here we go. Alvin Paul. I'm going yeah. to step back and let Ken Carl finish uh, waxing poetic about this Ray Lewis that's behind you because Ken, <laughs> Ken seems to love it. But uh, Alvin, tell, tell, us about, tell us about your work here. Let's start with am the I, Pat Mahomes. Am I, am I still echoing? Yeah, your mic still. Do you have your phone and your computer on? Nobody, Nobody at all. I got to turn down. down. <laughs> that Not really. Um, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to kick you out and come back in, okay? All right. All right. We're going to remove <laughs> Alvin. We'll, we'll remove Alvin from the link from the show, and then we're all going to just talk about his work while he's not here. And then uh, uh, <laughs> hopefully we'll get better. Okay. Do you have headphones, Alvin? No, 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 no. Okay, we'll live through the echo. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about let's talk about this uh, Pat Mahomes piece. All right, all right. So, so I'll talk, talk slower to help help the echo. Um, um, I bought the really realistic art, art. <clears throat> and I started, I started it off in style. style. Um, um, it was a little, little more abstract, abstract. <clears throat> and then it was based, based on, on the team, team logo. logo, as you can see in the Steelers campaign. Wow. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I kind of combined kind of kind of kind of the two, two styles, styles and then added realism to the abstract style. style. And, you know, with, like, 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 those and, and the background, and kind of make some pop a little bit. And then, like, like, he's running out of a bunch of ghosts and stuff like that. I thought that was a 
Hey, Alvin, are you using a phone? You use your phone microphone? No, no buddy. buddy. This is my, 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 my computer, computer, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry bro. You want me you to log out, out and back, back in? in? Are you watching the stream on another channel? No. No. That's really I'm going to log out and back, back in. Okay, do that. All right, guys. Sorry about that. As we work through those technical issues, anything can happen when you're live, right? So um, we'll get it figured out. And then that's the that's the end of the art pages. There. There's Brody, the kid. Make sure you're checking out the Hobby Life every other Saturday. Check out last week's uh, episode. So it was a, it was a fun one. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna close that out. We're gonna do that, and now we're gonna try add uh, Alvin again. Hopefully, it works. Any better? There's the issue you saw, you saw it for the first time. Uh, obviously, you got a, got a sneak peek earlier, but uh, overall, you're you're with a bunch of great guys in this in this magazine. How how are you guys feeling to be a part of it? Because some of you, I know that being in Beckett is literally, literally a dream come true. Because you, you know you collected it as a kid, or you collected it as a kid, and you finally got in. So that's really cool. But like overall, how are you feeling about being in the issue? Oh. <laughs> I guess I'll start again. I, as you know, Eric, it's a dream come true for me. I, I, I used to buy the price guides. I would go to the back, look at the artwork in the back, go home, take it home. I transitioned from comic books to sports art because of these, because of Beckett Magazine. That's the truth. You know, you and I have talked about that before. Um, it's such an honor to be in the magazine. And then you see these the other wonderful artists. I mean, of course, you know, as a kid, they were great too. So. Um, it's just hard to believe that that and me as an artist could even be considered with this group of guys and the rest of the people in there. It's just amazing. I, word, there's no words for me personally. So, right, I, I I know how you feel about it, Edgar. How about you, man? Well, the, the same thing. I mean, I, I always looked at the sports art is one of the hardest things to actually do because um, there's not really a venue for it going back years and stuff. Uh, so the, the, the art galleries, you have the art galleries and they, they kind of consider you commercial then if you're doing sports and then you have, uh, the, 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 the teams and stuff. If you don't have a license from the NFL, you can't even get the stuff in the stores. There's no way to sell it. So it's like, it's very, very difficult. People don't realize. So to have Beckett come and actually showcase a lot of these fantastic sports artists and people that are doing sports art. I remember it was in, uh, it was in 19, uh, I think it was uh, 2006, maybe it was 2006, uh, at the, um, uh, the uh, Portrait Museum in Washington, D.C. It was the first time they had an actual sports art exhibit where they had one, one section where they actually had uh, sports art. I remember going to Washington just to see it because it was the first time a museum ever ever considered it as like art. And so for Beckett all these years to always been showcasing, you know, some artists in there over the years, it's just been, you know, a great thing because it, there's no avenue really to showcase to showcase that. So Beckett's been doing, you know, at the forefront of um, doing that for the whole entire <laughs> movement, I would say, you know. Awesome. awesome. Alvin, what do you think? I still echoing. You're okay. All right. I'm just excited. I'm super excited to be um, part of the part of Beckett. I used to buy it as a kid, and uh, you know, I used to cut out the Daniel Smith paintings and hang them on my wall, and uh, yeah. just to be part of this, it's a dream come true, man. So awesome. I'm just humbled and excited. It, it's it's uh, you, the first time I saw my name in the Beckett Price Guide. It was humbling and surprising too. So <laughs> I, I, I completely understand. I completely, completely understand. Chadwick, man, you have a fan club going on. I don't know what's up with this. I think you paid some people to get in here. But, <laughs> but like, I don't know how you feel about it. Out there, man. There's a lot of cool collectors. Yeah. A lot of cool support out there. Cool. So, um, like, but getting into Beckett, how do you feel about that, man? <clears throat> Man, that's awesome. That was one of those things last year when I got in, and it's like I even posted about it. It was like, yeah, you know, there we go. That's It was one of those things that took a while. Um, I don't know. It was one of the things I grew up with as a kid, going into the shop. And I remember in the magazine itself, on the front and back cover to the inside, they had the artwork when you opened it up, and they featured the different artists in there. 
And it was one of those things, me, my family, everybody, everybody had always said, you know, I would end up in Beckett and all that. And I was always telling people growing up, I'm going to be in Beckett one day, you know, doing that. And uh, for a while there, I guess, I don't know what happened where artwork wasn't used as much in sports as far as the trading card product and product in general goes. Uh, but when Beckett and the other companies began involving that more, you know, that was a good thing, I think, overall for both artists and the industry. I mean, the more we can involve artists in that, the better. So for me, I mean, getting in Beckett and everything, that was kind of a uh, a lifelong thing for me since I was a kid. So it was just awesome you know, to, see, to be able to get into that. And then again, and hopefully we'll continue to, to build off of it and continue to build things and grow it from there. But yeah, it's been awesome. Awesome. Uh Edgar, who's Barbara? My sister. My sister. <laughs> who's your sister? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys are good. Every one of you guys that said somebody to come in tonight and, and say, hey, they're great, or I love your work, whatever. But you know what that tells me is that, like, you're one, you're really passionate about what you're doing, and it's coming off of your canvas so well that other people are really getting behind it. So that's great. Kudos to each one of you for for doing that, man. They, they just keep coming in. Here's <laughs> I, I saying all oh, you guys are amazing. That's that's just nuts. Uh, Justin here, Kim Carl is absolutely amazing. Watching your hard work. Let me show you guys. Uh, let me show you guys something. Since we're talking about uh, hard work, I want to show you uh, the absolute coolest thing that that I I think is really awesome. Um, this is the best, the best little. King Carl piece ever. Um, yeah, there it is right there. That's <laughs> there. <laughs> I want an autograph one, Eric. I want an autograph one after this. Uh, autograph for both of you guys. Oh, shoot. You guys listening, he, does, he definitely does um, – Definitely does commissions, but all you guys do commissions, right? I mean, I know that well, the Ray Lewis piece was hopefully a, a commission piece, but you said that you were working with the Ravens or hopefully trying to get that. But all you guys do commissions. So, how, Edgar, let's start with you. How can people get a hold of you for commissions? Uh, they can they can uh, go to my website sportsartist.com, and uh, they can they can either call me there, they can call the number there, or they can fill out the form that's on there as well. Right now, I'm booked uh, with commissions all the way to 2021. <laughs> <laughs> my next one, the, I, I actually, I actually just finished a painting actually of my daughter, my one daughter. Um, she was the last one out of the six kids that I have, but they're all adult kids now. And uh, I just finished that one, and uh, now I have to start on a commission of Michael Jordan actually. Oh, I mean, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a commission, you might as well just do the do the goat, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chad. Well, how about yourself, sir? I mean, as far as commission work goes, uh, it's when my schedule allows for it. There's just a lot going on on the commercial end right now, <clears throat> uh, but you can find me at uh, ChadwickHaverlandStudios.com or anywhere on social media, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I believe the handle is Chadwick Haverland Art on Instagram. Uh, Twitter is C Haverland Art, and Facebook you can find me on there. Awesome, Edgar. Edgar, you still got guys coming in. Mitch Brown loves you too. Yeah, what up, my, nephew, <laughs> my nephew. Awesome, uh, <laughs> Alvin. How about yourself? With permission, sir. Uh, AlvinPaul.com is the easiest way to get all of them. Okay, that, I mean, do you guys. You said, Edgar, you said you're back up until 2021, right? Is that what you said? Yes, yeah. I mean, and Chadwick, I know that it's on your schedule, but, I mean, do you guys? I'm back up till next month. month. What's that? <laughs> I'm back up till next month. Next month. <laughs> well, after yeah. tonight, we're, we're, that's, that's a shame because all these people jumping in saying how much they love you, they better get on. Oh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm just joking. I, I got work. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Now, they they all know, like, they can reach out to artists anytime for the most part and, you know, check in on things, you know, as far as the schedule goes. It's it's a common thing. I get messages all the time. So anybody's welcome to message me through social media or whatever. And, you know, it's probably easier sometimes, but it just depends on what's going on. 
Yeah, Ch Chadwick does uh, some some great stuff with with all the uh, comic book kind of stuff. I mean, I, I I grew up loving comic books. That's how I always always drew pictures of Conan the Barbarian. I loved Frank Frazetta. You know, just oh, that that amazing. amazing for yeah. amazing, yeah. Amazing, and uh, you know, I was drawing for a long time when I was a kid and stuff, but didn't uh, started raising started raising a family at a young age, and uh, didn't start didn't start actually doing sports and painting until uh, actually um, 1990. But uh, I always I even have a lot of comic books. I have a whole collection of coffee <laughs> mugs. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel comic coffee mugs in the in my cabinet downstairs. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. Thank you. <laughs> well, we we got to back up on the comments a little bit because Jeff Pearson <laughs> is telling a story here that Chadwick, you're gonna have to tell. Uh, he met you on a plane six years ago. He had a tattoo of his art of his work on his leg. The last six years have been history. Tell me about this. Tell me about this tattoo of your art on your leg. <laughs> uh, that's my guy, Jeff, right there, man. Uh, so we actually met on a plane. I believe I was going to Chicago. Uh, he was going to Kansas. Uh, yeah, he's probably going to shoot me for not remembering that. But uh, no, we just met on a plane, and we just got into talking over tattoos, tattoo work, because he's sleeved up and everything, and that's how we met. Now, he's been a friend ever since. He's one of my business partners now, awesome. so he, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's my main, my right hand. He's my business partner, you know, the, you know, brother from another mother type of thing. <laughs> sure, we've been riding together since you know for the last six years. Okay, let's let's ask a next question. I, I know that we're supposed to be on for thirty minutes. I've had you almost forty, but I, I'm having still a lot of fun, so I hope you guys don't mind. Is that is it cool? It's cool. Awesome. So here's here's what I want to know. I was telling you earlier that I like I love pieces of box like uh, the Mike Tyson for Mike Rodriguez or you know I love boxing pieces it's such boxing itself is an art when you guys tackle like take on uh, Yadi Molina or you know or Saquon Barkley you know, they're they're art in motion how what are you doing to best capture that because I mean if you are you or any of you guys athletes and understand the, the body in motion or are you just trying to bring out what you think it should look like I can, I can but me personally, I trained uh, many years with uh, Bob Long, Grandmaster Bob Long, Bob Long School of Self-Defense over in Lodi, New Jersey. And um, I, I believe that that really helped a huge amount in understanding the motion and how to move your body properly and stuff like that, doing throws and all kinds of things. Um, and uh, as far as uh, I've done a lot of boxing too, so that's always something that uh, really helps a lot. And then I played football in high school, four years in high school playing football. So that was my main thing is uh, drawn to football. And I've always done the paintings. Most of my paintings, these other guys will probably that, that know my work will know they're usually, they're, they're, they're really dark backgrounds and stuff like that. Cause I always felt like football was always this, there's this side of it that's, that's deep and dark because it's, it's you know, um, and so I always try to capture the action, but also um, that 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 part about it, you know. Right. Right. So I think I believe the athlete, being an athlete and doing the martial arts and all that stuff, is a huge help when it comes to me doing my artwork. Awesome. Now, Alvin, I want to talk about specifically the Ray Lewis piece behind you. That pose that you have in both that that position, the running position, where he's getting ready to make a tackle. And then clearly uh, the, the pose of him when he's just destroyed a quarterback or, or a hapless wide receiver coming over the middle. Uh, like, that's a really – like, I know that Ray Lewis without seeing the number or anything like that. What were you – what kind of mindset were you in when you were when you, you were putting that on canvas? Well, he, he's just such an iconic player, so I wanted to capture his personality. You know, like he comes out on the field with the dance and, and – so I wanted to capture just him celebrating, but then I also wanted to capture him kind of in action, obviously like eyeing somebody that he's about to track down and, and blow up, you know? And, sure. then, uh, and then I took the logo and I blew it up to kind of just make it more abstract so it's not just the Ravens logo in the background. And, um, and I like to choose, you know, I like to, to have good lighting and. Uh, 
shadows and um, it just really came together for me. Uh, awesome. I played I played football sixth grade through senior year and then I walked on at Missouri Southern as a wide receiver, played a year as a walk on. Um, wow. I think that helps, you know, you know the like Robert was saying the other night, like you know the equipment, you know the you know the face mask, you know the snaps, you know the shoulder pads, you know the thigh pads, you know, and like you kind of get a feel for like you know the intensity of the game and stuff like that and try to capture that emotion in, in your painting as well as you know the, sure. the body part. Sure. Chadwick, I want to ask you the same question, but I want to ask you about comic books because, like, a lot of your work that I really love is on comic books. When you do that, I mean, obviously, these are not real-life people. They're, they're characters. But are you, are you trying to bring you, – you, you mentioned Joe Jusco earlier. Are you trying to bring, like, a recreation of what you saw as a childhood to life or uh, put your own spin on it? Or, I mean, because these are so detailed. They're, they're, they, they look like people. So – it, it really depends what you're going for. I mean, artists like Jusko, so he was still more of that fantasy artist who could also paint realism. You know, um, it really depends on what the subject is, what the subject matter is, what you're working on. Because if you're working realism and you're wanting to create, uh, say, a character from a film or a movie, it's all about capturing the essence of not just that character, but the actor too. You got to be able to capture the likeness. The likeness is what is going to sell the work itself, you know, and really bring that to life. So that's where really my focus is when I'm doing that kind of work. Um, if I'm, you know, creating that same thing on the sports end, it goes the same way. It's all about capturing that athlete. You want to capture the essence of that athlete and capture, you know, the best you can, you know, that 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 athlete's likeness, much like the character you know, or the actors. I think that's what it's all about. The more in depth, the more in detail you can get with that, you know, the better you're gonna be, you know, there. And that's what it's all about. You know, for me anyways, right there, that's where the attention goes. Sure. Yeah, I, now, I, I, uh, before I jump up again, do you want to talk about the uh Broncos quarterback situation at all? Or I mean <laughs> <laughs> I'm cool with who we have right now. I'm cool yeah. with I'm cool with who we got. Like we'll be I think we'll be all right. I like what he was doing. You know, he had the buzz light year going. Yeah, he had all that going the last couple games of the season. So, we'll, uh, Chadwick, we'll dude, I'm a born and raised Broncos fan too, buddy. There you go. <laughs> That's for a hey, born in Durango. So nobody can give me crap for being an Arizona <laughs> Broncos. I'm, I'm originally from no Broncos, baby. That's, That's funny. funny. <laughs> That's funny. All right, Ken. Ken, yeah, Ken. I was in Colorado as a kid. That's where most of my family's from. Yeah, there you go. Definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah, go orange and blue there. <laughs> Kim, you uh, you do great artwork of, of sports, of, uh, of you know, of athletes, and I know everybody's seen that stuff. But you have this whole other side of your of your art that you do that are personal commissions. Like I showed Doug Carr earlier earlier myself. Um, I know that you you work on reference pieces, but it just <clears throat> seems like you take such great detail into capturing the moment that, that, that you're trying to present and you take a lot of pride in it because you can tell, you can tell by the work. What are some of the reactions that you're seeing or that you're getting from, from the uh, folks that, that are getting or receiving these on the other end? Um, I mean, I, you know, I guess pretty good because uh, I got a lot of business. I'm not backed up like Edgar for the next decade, but you know, <laughs> I'm doing pretty full for a while. I thought I was doing good until he said he was booked for the next decade. But, um, um, but you know, my business is all through word of mouth. I, unlike the rest of these guys, I don't have a lot of uh, professional athletes. I don't have any professional athletes reaching out to me. Mostly, uh, mostly, I, mostly I just draw cards and uh, bigger pieces to commission work, and it just spreads with word of mouth. I do take pride in the images. I love, I'm a big sports fan. Um, like uh, Alvin's piece, you can tell who Ray Lewis is. You don't need to see the face. And I look for poses like that, signature poses, uh, forms that they use. Saquon's jumping, that's an, that's an iconic uh, image of him. Um, because you should be able to tell what it is without seeing their face, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you want to add the details. You want to add that. I like to work with a lot of blacks and whites, high contrast, uh, to help make them more alive. Um, 
But yeah, you, you the more dynamic the pose, the more interesting it is. I hate straight on shots. Draw those. I hate those, you know, because they're just they're not they're not interesting. You know, and I can't make them interesting. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do take great pride in the different poses and the in knowing those things. And if people seem to love them. I've, I've been blessed so far. So but I'm pretty early on. I'm not as deep as these guys are. So, well, you guys are all fantastic. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on, Ken and Chadwick. I, I feel like like we're old friends now. We, we can. Edgar <laughs> <laughs> and Alvin, it's, it's been great getting to know you tonight. Um, before we jump off, uh, I've been trying to end these shows with, with one good thing, one one good positive thing. So we're just gonna go around. It, it doesn't have to be art related. It doesn't have to be uh, sports related. Ken, tell me one good thing that you got going on right now. Oh boy. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm actually working on a piece that's interesting to me. I'm drawing, there's a famous uh, Ty Cobb picture where he slides in the third. Uh, it's all black and white. Um, a guy commissioned me to draw that at 16 by 20 and I've converted it to color. Um, it's a real challenge for me. The photo reference isn't real good. These guys can probably relate to that. Um, uh, it's a piece I could not have drawn six months ago. So it's, it's challenging and I'm pretty excited about it. We'll see how it turns out though. So Awesome. Alvin, how about yourself, sir? What, tell me one good thing, buddy. Oh, man, I uh, just, me and my wife bought a house about a mile from Siesta Key Beach, dude. And uh, oh, I've just been working on the house, getting the freaking art studio set up so I can, like, really start plugging away, man. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Chadwick? I mean, one good thing, uh, just everybody go and check out Zobi, you know, Zobi Productions, shopzobi.com. That's, you know, where we're working. Um, that's the, our big partner right now. We're creating a lot of stuff, changing the game when it comes to mystery boxing, uh, autograph books, a lot of new product being developed and put out there. Uh, my other partner, Days Gone, uh, they're about to change the game when it comes to uh, authentication and uh, COAs. We're bringing them into the game to do some different things. So there's a lot of good stuff going on, you know, as far as uh, the agency goes. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. Cool. Edgar, how about you, sir? Yeah, I got uh, I got triplets in college, and uh, my my two daughters um, are are going to graduate college in the next uh, two weeks. So I'm really, I'm really excited about that. My son in college will uh, graduate the next semester, but um, I'm real real happy and real proud of them, and excited that uh, I know with the with the pandemic and everything that everybody's dealing with. You know, they're not going to have um, a ceremony and stuff like that. But sure. um, hopefully that'll that'll get worked out, you know, next semester or something. But uh, <laughs> right now I'm just thrilled and excited that uh, the girls are uh, graduating, you know. Yeah. Uh, Ted just commented. I caught that, too. Can we back up and talk about triplets? Because like, this is something we should have left with. Uh, you have triplets? Yeah, so so I had I had three boys, right? Okay. And then after I had the, the three boys, then we wound up getting hit with uh, triplets, two girls and a boy. Living wow. a dream. It was you know, being an artist and insanity at its best, you know. Right. <laughs> it's, 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 I have twins. Uh, but the now the, the three of them are uh, the they're the youngest ones, but they're twenty one. So okay. you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's all, <laughs> it was, uh, insanity that is best. And it's, um, it's just a blessing really, you know, they just, I don't know if that Edgar Brown is actually only 39 years old, all the gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, man. That's crazy. Hey guys, you've been a real blessing uh, being on with me tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, go check out the June baseball issue of, 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 of the sports artist, second annual sports sports art issue. You guys don't want to miss it. All the artists in there are great. Before we get out of here, just in case uh, our, our guys are living under a rock, we're going to go around the room one more time. Uh, Ken, give us your social media so we can follow you. <clears throat> um, Facebook is Ken Carl Sports Art Gallery. That's easy to find. Um, my Twitter handle is old. Uh, it's at Ken Carl 0101. Um, and my uh, Instagram is Ken underscore Carl underscore sports underscore art. <laughs> and I have a, a website, uh, www.kencarlsportsart.com. There you go. Mr. Brown. 
All right, mine is uh, sportsartist.com. Mine is sportsartist.com and edgarbrown.com. My uh, social media, my Instagram is Ed, at Edgar J. Brown. My Twitter is at Edgar J. Brown. And my Facebook is at Edgar J. Brown. There you go. Chadwick? Uh, Chadwick Kevin Studios.com, shopzobi.com, um, and anywhere on social media, you can find me. Awesome. And Alvin? Hey, can I just clarify something? I gave a thumbs down earlier when Ken was talking, but it's because Robert McFedridge came on and, and talked some trash about the Raiders and the Broncos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just wanted to clarify. Yeah, my website's alvinfall.com and uh, Alvin Fall Sports Art on Facebook. And then I think Alvin Fall Sports Art on Instagram, too. So. Hey, Alvin, we got to get you on Twitter. I tagged all these guys on the Twitter post today, but I couldn't tag you because you weren't there. I don't think I'm on Twitter. I'll get on Twitter, man. Yeah, you got to get on Twitter. There's a great right. sports bar community on Twitter, and right. uh, it's it's just as strong uh, as Facebook and, and Instagram, so you got to get on there. Thank you All so right. much, guys, for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. I'm going to let you hop off and finish up some business here, but thank you, everyone. All right, take care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Take care, guys. Thanks. Nice meeting you all. Nice meeting you all. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, as they continue to pop off, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a quick uh, quick rundown. You guys got to leave. You can't stay. You got to go. Oh, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. All right. See you, Edgar. See you later, Eric. Thanks, man. Right. Guys, just a quick reminder that we got a show 3 o'clock on Friday uh, with another Beckett Roundtable. It's going to be Ted Barker, myself, Brian Fleischer, and, of course, Mr. Jeremy Murray. We're hoping to be able to give you some, some good news, uh, see what the state says uh, and how things are going. If not, give you some updates about what's going on at Beckett and uh, all that good kind of stuff that I know that you want to know about. Where's your orders, that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll have a great conversation about that. Also, tomorrow night we have a, a special show. It's a it's a sports auction auction house show. Um I'm going to have a lot of fun with the guys on it. It's, it's Heritage. Let me pull up my calendar to make sure I get it right. I want to make sure that I get everyone right on here because I know that we have Heritage on for a, mo a moment. Um, we have Mike Payne on join joining us as well as we talk about uh, auction, uh, sports auctions. And then the last auction house that we're going to have is going to be – look, they just says BLP Auctions House. Oh, Mile High. So we got Mile High. Heritage and uh, and Mike Payne joining Mike Payne from the Beckett team joining us all tomorrow. Uh, thanks, uh, Miss Brown. A great show. Thank you very much. So that's tomorrow night. Uh, don't forget, it's a seven o'clock start tomorrow uh, and three o'clock on Friday. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. I really appreciate it. Until tomorrow, stay blessed.